And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Yamaha Upboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's Talk Hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock God Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup, hour number two. The Let's Talk Hookup coming your way here on 97.3 The Fan. As we heard Pete Gray out of the studio today, he's down in Kona, or out, out and down in Oops. Kona. Yeah, fishing the, fishing the firecracker open with the team from Maui Gym, including Paul Hebert from Wicked Tuna. I know those guys are going to have a great job and hopefully bring back a big paycheck for catching a big blue marlin out there. But, man, great time in the studio. Corey and I talking fishing, having some fun. And what a guest having our buddy Doug Kern, the, the captain of the team. Tackle store, <laughs> but Doug Kern, Fisherman's Landing Tackle and Fisherman's Land, and having a great time talking fishing and boy, talking lots of fun. And we want to hear from you, man. If you want to join us the second hour, it's been a busy, busy first hour of the show, Corey. It really has. The lines have been packed. It's probably because we're giving away a pair of Olakai sandals, the Ohana. And uh, you want to give us a shout? It's eight three three two eight eight zero nine seven three. They are packed again, but uh, just remember, you hear the ringtone. It's uh, that is our busy tone. So. Uh, Adam, if there is an open line, Adam will get to you immediately. You got it, buddy. That's for sure. Well, just before we came back from the break, we heard that commercial spot playing for Kingfisher Charters and never really had a chance to give the full rundown. Things have been so busy from our great Kingfisher trip last week. But, man, what a fantastic trip it was. Just a... I mean, perfect, perfect opportunity. The weather we caught just right. Very, very typical fishing weather in Southeast Alaska. It was, it, it, it basically when you go to Alaska, it's going to rain at some point during your trip. That's the reason it's so green and so beautiful. But the rain very easy to deal with with appropriate gear, and it's very unique in that on the beach in Sitka it rains virtually every day at some point. It's going to sprinkle here or there, um, but offshore not not at all. But man, the fishing was just incredible. And I know Doug, you and I uh, had a lot of fun doing that trip together. Last year, um, get a chance to experience that Kingfisher. Uh, yeah, that, that's a trip that anybody can do with any level of experience or desire to fish. There's so much more than just the fishing, just to be up there. But the fishing is so fantastic, and to be able to catch species that you know are so different from yeah. what we catch here and. It's just uh, an experience that everybody needs to have. I, I totally agree. And Dallas, I want to invite Dallas into the studio just because I thought it would give a very unique perspective. This was Dallas's first trip up to Kingfisher. Certainly no stranger to being in Alaska. Dallas has a lot more days in Alaska than I, having worked at um, worked you know the lodge life in the summers um, you know up, up in Alaska. But this was the first time up at Kingfisher, and I just thought it would be a very unique perspective, this being your first time going to Kingfisher Charters and what you kind of thought about the about the trip. Um, and from, good morning, by the good way. Good morning. Uh, from the very beginning, as far as uh, when they pick you up at the airport, it's super easy. They have uh, their little lodge hand right there, ready to do your fishing licenses, get your bag, get you set up, take you there. They bring your bags up to your room. Um our room, we had the Eagle Room, which if you can score that one, I would highly recommend getting the Eagle Lodge upstairs. It has a phenomenal view of the water and overlooks um, a ton of trees, and there's all these little I- islands just, like, right off the coast right there. Um, the the food, everyone always asks about the food, I feel like, how, sure. how it is. Um, it's great. Homemade biscuits, homemade gravy. Um Every night they come, you have two options as far as your entrees. Uh, Ken Ross showed me that you can definitely do half and half if you want it. So <laughs> you can't decide between a steak and a, yeah. and a fresh Dungeness crab. You just do them both. Yeah, tell them you want half and half, which was a good tip to have. Um, but as far as the fishing goes, that part was very nice. You know, breakfast um, is at 5 a.m. in the vans by 5.45, down at the boat at 6, and heading out on the boat at 6.15. And Simon's boat was Amazing, super comfortable. Um, 
Gary White definitely had his little spot, and I learned that everyone over the years has claimed their, <laughs> their territory, territory <laughs> on the boat. Yeah, you don't um, mess with Big Fish Gary White. No, no, no. You know, this is his uh, rod holder. G- Gary was nice enough. He let me share the cooler a couple times. <laughs> um, but Simon's boat is very spacious and was very, very comfortable. As are all the boats in the yeah. fleet. You know, every every boat yeah. very very similar. A lot of um, you know a mix of the larger aluminum pilot house style cabin boats. I know. Boat, the boat that you fished on with Heath uh, the year previous, Doug, was was a oh very similar setup. Yeah. I mean, big and roomy and, and very comfortable for, very for comfortable. a ride. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it now on the Instagram. I mean, how wide? That, the boat looks like it's 12 feet wide. That's it is. Yeah, yeah it's 12, 12, is it? 12, 12 feet of beam. How about that? Uh, triple, oh, yeah. triple, I'm a boat broker. Tri- triple 300 <laughs> Yamahas. Yeah, it was a, it's a lot of fun. And, and they just make it. You, 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 both what you guys just said is okay. It's so turnkey. You just don't have to think about anything mm-hmm. you you make your flight, and the second you get off the plane, everything is handled until you get back on it. Yeah. Nice. The, the fish processing is fantastic. They deal with all your fish, and the processing is great, and everything is frozen and vacuum-packed and put into boxes. And when you show, when they when they shuttle you back to the airport, your fish just, you know, there's one of the fish guys, like, along with you, and, it, it, you know, just gets checked on as checked luggage on the plane, and away you go with the, you know, boxes full of fresh salmon and halibut and One black of the things cod. I liked was their, uh, their, Board with all the catches from that. all the boats. That was so <laughs> see how fun. We, it's it's <laughs> like our fish count in the landing, but it's the old school, just handwritten. Yeah, you're you're yeah, seeing like how you compare to your it's buddies. Like updated, like, like, oh well, yeah, Max, uh, you got one box plus this. this. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was fun. And one thing I also really liked, like obviously, as you said, definitely not a stranger to fishing in Alaska. But now that I've lived in San Diego for three years, my being almost married to you, my uh, tackle collection has has grown immensely, and I was it was a huge relief to have such similar tackle that I fish with down here right. on, as on Simon's boat. So I, there was no time wasted as far I knew exactly what to do, how to handle it, and had, it, had no problem. It sure looks like it. I mean that the halibut, the Pacific <laughs> halibut, is huge. On yeah, the it, it was nice. That was uh, yeah. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah, a lot of work. Three in one day and just. The, uh, coming up. But the gear, you know, the the a lot of the a lot of the fishing is similar, however, completely different from what we do in Southern California. The reels we fished for bait for halibut were Talica 25s. The reels we jigged for the lingcod and halibut with were Tranks 500s. And the you know the bass the, the the salmon trolling rods are Takotas with seeker rods. I mean, it's just it's it's similar but different. And Doug, you nailed it. It's it's very cool looking, fun fish to catch. That's just it's different from our norm, but it's right on that same plane and and there's not better scenery than kingfisher charters in sitka alaska i mean you know it's made up of so many little miniature islands and like there's an an island can be the size of a city block and there's a full forest on it and the you know big pine trees come right to the water's edge and bald eagles everywhere it's just a it's a spectacular place and and you talk about the fish i mean you all catch our reds during the you know spring and the winter and stuff you go up there, you catch some cod. I mean, those <laughs> things are giant. <laughs> it's really, really fun. And just one more thing. I I love going up there for the fishing, no doubt. But one question I get asked a lot of times is by wives and, you know, men who are interested in bringing their wives or girlfriends up or daughters um, is how friendly it is sure. for women. And um, it was great. I mean, the lodge is, you know, in town, they're more than happy to drop you off at little trails, take you around. Uh, Rick failed to mention that there's a hot tub. What? But <laughs> now that I know that there's a hot tub, I will definitely take advantage. And um, <laughs> But Sitka itself has great little shops. Um, there's a phenomenal caramel company in Sitka, the Sweet Sisters Caramel Shop, that <laughs> I loaded up on. So, But there's tons of shopping. There's tons of hiking. We had a day where we went and just caught brook trout in a lake on this long hike but it was it was great but um, all by yourself yeah i mean not you didn't cool see another that? soul super yeah. easy to get to we always stay that was dad and i's tradition we would always stay an extra day every year at the end of the trip and just hang out and enjoy the town and rent a car or borrow a car from a buddy and just cru- cruise around town and uh 
and you know Dallas and I wanted to con- uh, you know continue that tradition, and so we stayed an extra day and went on a couple hikes, and yeah, it, it's How awesome. Cool. It's a it's a fantastic place and a really good trip, and I really it's one of those things that if you're a guy that loves fishing that you need to do at some point. It's a bucket list style trip, and uh, and I'll tell you, uh, being very fortunate to visit a lot of places in Alaska, there's not a better place for fishing and for ease of travel than Sitka. You fly directly via a, you know a, a full size pl- you know jet in to town there's no bag restrictions it's just it's like making a normal flight it's very easy to get to and, and, and there's no puddle jumper you don't the, have to get no, on a puddle jumper no, you're flying you're full on 737 right on into sitka it's okay. it's the largest or at the time i don't know maybe it's different now but at, at the time it was the smallest daily visited full size you know international airport that there was like oh. it's a but it's a great time and a, a great scenery very easy to do and you know and, and for as expensive as Alaska can get there's no better value you know there's no extra hidden charges with Kingfisher they don't charge you any extra for processing or shipping or transfers or that so anyways it's a great trip I highly recommend it we're going again next year uh, Pete's going Dallas already made it very clear that she is going again <laughs> for sure. there's, I there's, think she made it very yeah. clear she's going <laughs> to visit the hot yeah. tub yeah, you can yeah, really and the carnival <laughs> shop. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I really hope that you guys come and join us next year. It's a lot of fun. If you want to get more information, you can always call Kingfisher Charters. They're 800 727 6136. Or you can visit them on the website. Or just jump on our trips page. The trip for next year is already posted. It's June 14th through the 18th. It's a fantastic time. It's right around Father's Day. It's a great trip. That was Dad and I's tradition since I was in high school. I, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a very easy, very fun trip. And like like Dal said, if you're wanting to bring a wife, a girlfriend, a daughter, man, it's super accommodating for it. No issues with bathrooms on boats and things like that. It's just everything is handled. It's, it's a really, really nice one and, and highly recommended for sure. Well, with that said, it's time to find out what's going on on the water because we got a good guy standing by for that, Corey. And the catch report today is sponsored by the Fish Pros of Fishman's Processing in San Diego. Not only they offer the best processing for your fish when, the tr- when your trip returns to the San Diego landings, now... With Fish Pros to Market, you can purchase fresh fish, smoked and jerkied fish, spices, rubs, smoked cheeses, and their famous tuna burgers. Get it at their convenient Liberty Station location or order online at fishmansprocessing.com. You got it, man. Let's find out what's going on on the water with your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hansen's on the line. What's up, Dave? Hey, guys. Good morning. What happened all of a sudden? <laughs> Something happened. They op- I mean, fishing has been insane for months and months, but they just opened up the floodgates and yellowfin tuna came pouring into Southern California, guys. It's absolutely insane. Jimmy Decker and Eric went out there yesterday and had a couple of yellowfin and a bluefin, and they were back at the dock before it got dark. That's so um, cool. Their fish caught it three miles from Pyramid Head yesterday. There is so much tuna just flooded into our area, Rick. It's absolutely insane. Not just bluefin, but yellowfin. And they're biting the troll, which is mind-boggling. We haven't had troll fish for a long time, so I can't even imagine what the what's going to happen here during July. This is absolutely insane. And plus, all the fish on the beach and all the fish over at the islands and everything, they're going to get a little reprieve. They're going to get a break. It's going to be good for the guys that are fishing the islands because lately it's just been hundreds and hundreds of boats at Catalina. But now there's tuna, and there's tuna at the 181, there's tuna at the 182, there's tuna on the 43, there's tuna at Clemente. It's good. It's unbelievable. And it all, I was there Tuesday offshore all day Tuesday. We never saw a fish. And then all of a sudden, day before yesterday, the stuff came flooded in, so... You got to go fishing, guys, like we talk about every week. You just got to go. No doubt, man. It's just awesome to hear. It's so glad that that fish is so available all the way up and down the beach. It's a great sign of things to come. And, you know, that's, again, we talk about a big spread of fish. That's the reason why a fishdope.com becomes so important to keep track on where it is. So, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to come down to San Diego from Orange County or LA, if you're going to fish the fish that's now up in that zone, that's a, a big spread to keep track of. And guys like yourself and guys like Mark Wish and everybody that contributes that great information for Danny sums it up in one spot that's very easy to find and if you want to become a member of fishdope.com if you're not already you can save 20 bucks on a new membership by using the code hook up now it's hook up now all lowercase no space and if a guy wants more information on how to catch him and all the great stuff you're doing on your website how do we find you dave 
Well, you guys can look me up on the web at YourSaltWaterGuy.com. And, Rick, like you were just saying, you guys have to now. It's super important to pay attention to what Danny's printing. Danny and I talked right before I went on air, and the amount of information he gave me was mind-boggling. There's so much stuff happening in Southern California right now, guys. If you're not a member of Fish Dope, you're going to be missing out. So do like Rick said. Go check out what Danny's reporting. And good luck this week, and I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Thanks, Dave. Great job. Appreciate it very much. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate that. Hey, I want to remind you, next Saturday, San Diego County Ford Dealers Remote Broadcast is coming up. It's Saturday, July the 6th at Mossy Ford in Pacific Beach. It's your next chance to qualify for the big grand prize, either by random draw or by winning the Shimano Casting Contest. This is a trip for one on the Royal Star Fly Down, Fly Back, Long Range Mazatlan uh, trip in January. This trip also includes round trip tickets from LAX to Mazatlan on Alaska Airlines. Be sure to click on the Alaska Air banner for the on the first page of Let's Talk Hookup dot com for more details and all the great destinations that Alaska Airline flies. In addition, you can also win a trip on the Blackjack courtesy of our friends at Dana Landing. That's your own charter on that beautiful four pack lures, the Blackjack they have at Dana Landing on Mission Bay. We're going to be giving away Shimano rods and reels, Maui Jim sunglasses. There's going to be tons of giveaways too during every one of the commercial breaks. We have a full raffle for Aftco prizes, Nomad prizes. Prizes, cigar fluorocarbon. There's so much good stuff. You're going to get all of those opportunities just for showing up. Check the guest page at letstalkhookup.com for rules and details. We'll see you there Saturday, July the 6th at Mossy Ford on Mission Bay Drive just off the I-5 freeway in Pacific Beach. Corey, phones are absolutely jug-packed. Let's jump into them. And they've been so patient, Rick. Let's talk to Don. Don's calling from Woodland Hills this morning. And uh, good morning, Don. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. What's up, Don? Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call, Rick, Corey, and Doug. Good morning. Kudos to uh, your significant other, Rick. She did a great job on the phones yesterday. Hey, thanks, buddy. Yeah, she did a great job. We were Adam, as always, very uh, very much missed part of our team, but pretty cool having Dal step right in there and take over. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Hey, um, you were talking earlier about the Colt Sniper uh, for uh, dropping down for the bigger bluefin and changing out the rings and the hooks. What size rings and what size hooks and what size Colt Sniper? Yeah, I mean, it varies. The Colt Snipers literally will catch everything from Bonita to larger tuna. We probably try not to target the 200-pounders on a Colt Sniper. Um, That's more of a flat fall thing or, you know, uh, dropping down heavier line. But um, for targeting these, you know, 80-pounders, even catching a 100-pounder, it's great. for whatever reason, we did have comments from our boats this year that the the treble hooks were getting better uh, bites and um, were doing well on the bluefin. In, in the past, we've also rigged them with uh, like an Aki Twist uh, single hook, but you need a more significant hook nonetheless. And um, so we're using uh, the owner quadruple extra strong hooks in, um, depending on the size of the jig, anywhere from 1, 1.0, 2.0, in those size ranges. Um, right now, the size of the Colt Snipers has been that 80 and 100 size have been the predominant size that are, that are getting bit the best. Um, we also uh, change out the split ring to uh, a number 8 or even a number 9 if you want to, but that number 8 is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a 120-pound test. You're never going to straighten that on you know, the type of gear that we're fishing those things on. Um, you also want to put uh, a leader on there, fluorocarbon leader. I always consider um, Colt snipers to be like an M&M to a tuna, and they just suck it in and, and it goes down. So you're definitely going to have some fish hooked deeper with the ring inside their mouth so that you know those bluefin teeth are going to be chafing your line. And you can get bit on a 100-pound test fluorocarbon leader if you want to, You know, a little 2-foot, two 2.5-foot two piece of leader on there. Um, you can go straight to your uh, spectra line if you want to. Um, you could certainly throw mono as well, but um, straight spectra to a 100-pound or an 80-pound leader, something like that, um, 80 or 100 80 or 100 size Colt sniper, um, and uh, you know they'll get they'll bite it on the fall, they'll bite it on the retrieve. 
um, you know, you just want to keep in contact with your line. If you hit the bottom in 2,000 feet of water, it's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> but, brought, but only 100 feet down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you brought up a good point, too, with what you said about those split rings. You know, in in many cases, it is appropriate to be changing the split rings. And like you said, that number eight split rings, it's rated, it's rated to 120 pounds. I, I've had plenty of people like, well, I mean, I've seen a lot of fish this year that are bigger than 120 pounds. <laughs> you got to keep in mind, your drag is slipping off of your reel at like 15 pounds and 18 pounds and maybe in the 20s somewhere yes. so it's not it's a, way overkill yeah yeah you're you're in you're in really good shape but with that said there's a lot of split rings out there and they are not all created equal and a lot of times the stock rings are nowhere near as robust as some of the ones you'd swap out to yep agreed i just wouldn't chance it i mean it's a very inexpensive thing it's super simple to do get yourself a pair of split ring pliers you can you know, change them out on the boat if you need to. Um, we do it in the shop all the time for people. Just bring your jigs in, and we'll we'll convert them over for you. Yep, good call, Don. We ready? When are we gonna see you again? I know you make your uh, your quite a few trips, uh, very regular on the Queen and a bunch of boats down there. When are we gonna see you again? I uh, hope to be there uh, sometime mid July. All right, on buddy, cool. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you, and uh, appreciate the phone call very much. Who do we got next there? All right, let's jump in. Let's talk to John. John called from Escondido this morning, and uh, welcome to the show, John. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? We're doing up, great. John? How are you? Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing well. I'm in Vegas listening to your show. Nice. On my way to Sedona for the week. Uh, I called in yesterday uh, uh, while I was traveling, uh, just getting off the, uh, the RP. But, uh, Doug, i got to love you guys there at the shop because you guys talk about it all the time, you know, Get on the wait list. Get on the wait list. And so there's a trip I like to fish on the uh, the, 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 uh, the Pacific Queen. It's the end of the, uh, usually the last week in July, and it's sponsored by Daiwa. Well, this year they put it out in uh, December, so when I went to go look for it, it was already booked up. Oh, no. And I was number, I, I, I was number eight on the wait list. I got called yesterday. Hey, so all fishing, right, right, John. But, Bingo. But, the, but, the, but the, 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 the great thing about that, right, so I'm going to fish on the Queen Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I get off the boat Friday morning. Well, because I was on the Royal Polaris and I, and I didn't have that other that, the other trip, I booked a three-day uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, come back Monday morning on the uh, the Royal Polaris. So I'm going to get off the Pacific Queen and get off the Royal Polaris. That's so awesome. <laughs> You're doing it right, buddy. That's the life. Prime time. It's like you're going to be on a seven-day local trip, and the fishing locally is as good as ever. So yeah. that was a good call and good timing. <laughs> Birthday to me, right? Yeah, but, uh, exactly. My, my question for you guys uh, is: the I like to fish the blackwater uh, fluorocarbon, but I've noticed that there's just one spool left on your shelf. <laughs> the lone twenty pound spool. The lone twenty pound spool. Right, and and and, and there's no. Uh, 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 you know, no vacant spot for the stuff to come back in. And then my other question for you is, I heard that Shimano was having a hard time putting reels or keeping reels or putting reels on the shelf. Um, and so I would just, uh, you know, I talked to Ricky about that uh, uh, Calica 12 uh, yesterday. And so, uh, but, it, but is that is the, the reels a problem or is that just a rumor? Well, <clears throat> let's put it this way. Our hardcore part of the season started a good two months early this year and so a lot of these manufacturers allocations that they thought would take them through the end of august are starting to become depleted um we are pretty aware of that dynamic and we have stayed a couple months ahead on most items the the blackwater is a different story they they had um, some issues with their manufacturer over there in japan we're told that um, there's a good chance that we'll have product again in July. But with that said, um, we've make, been making great do with the Seaguar blue label. The blue label is the most uh, similar to the Blackwater in abrasion resistance. And very affordable, and it's something I've used from the get-go, really. Yeah, I mean, it was it, the original fluorocarbon that we saw like 15 years ago. And then it blossomed into you know multiple different put-ups and different formulas and different Premier companies. And pink and gold. Now we're back to the original formula. It's funny how that often works. You know, it's the original fluorocarbon. Don't mess with it. It no. works. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, the um, 
Shimano is having, you know, trouble keeping up because we're buying too many darn reels from yeah. them. And <laughs> you say that, you said that the season started early a couple months ago, but yes. I thought you were going to say five years ago. <laughs> I mean, really, we've had steady fishing for yeah. five plus years. And yeah, we have. Unpredictable. I would um, I would say you're spot on in your thought, and and honestly, if that is a reel that you know you want in your arsenal, but maybe you don't need to get it for a couple months, I, I would buy it now. I, I just, would. I just, I just would. It's not Shimano's fault. It's not like they're having a problem. You you nailed it, Doug. It's just things are busier than they normally are, and you know you just don't say go and produce a reel in a box tomorrow. Like nope. these plans had to be made months ago, and very fortunately for all of us as fishermen, the fishing is just better than expected and you know that talica 12 talica 16 in particular is a particularly important reel to have right now and they're just getting gobbled up and you know we are in very good supply right now but hey man fishing is fishing and things get crazy so if it's something you know you need man i i would just i would just get it it's the same with all of it i mean rods are disappearing colt snipers are disappearing it's you crazy. know line is disappearing so um yeah i would say get putting Putting things into your collection earlier rather than later is probably a good call this year. If you want to see a, a funny behind-the-scenes move, like there, and I'll say it for sure, the reason Fisherman's Landing Tackle does so good is because Doug does such a good job at staying ahead of those kinds of things. And it's not always easy. Like, I mean, think about just think about for a minute how fast all that tackle gets flying out of there, and you know, and then when somebody starts to run low, finding sources and and knowing like, okay, man, we're you know, we, we might have 20 of these reels on the shelf you would think that's fine and you know, Doug would be like well that's X amount of reels a day over X amount of weeks that's only two weeks and you know just making moves and it's, it's fun <laughs> it's fun watching the master at work I can tell you that much <laughs> it's fun buying that much stuff. <laughs> yeah. if I was a woman that had a shopping problem I'd, I'd be in heaven <laughs> right, exactly. no, hey John appreciate the phone call very oh, much oh man we're having such a good time we're going to be right back on let's talk hook up on 97.3 the fan this is Captain Art Taylor of The Searcher. Celia and I and everyone at Team Searcher would like to thank all of our customers for a successful 2018 season. Are you searching for an affordable fishing adventure from one and a half to seven days in length? The Searcher has an outstanding crew, great food, air-conditioned cabins and galley, and an RSW system to preserve your catch. Our 2019 schedule is available now. Book your fishing adventure online at searchersportfishing.com or call our office at 619 619- 226-2403. That's 619-226-2403. When it comes to Southern California sport fishing, two names stand out. Fisherman's Landing Tackle and Shimano. Hi, this is Doug Kern. We have the most complete selection of Shimano saltwater rods and reels, like Talica, Trinidad, and Tranks reels, plus Terramar and Therese rods. Our professional saltwater experts at Fisherman's Landing Tackle have the know-how to help you choose the right Shimano rod and reel for your next trip. When it comes to Shimano gear, you owe it to yourself to visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego or on the web at saltwatertackle.com. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Our hard-working crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trips, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing is now a full-service sport fishing operation, offering great half- and full-day open party trips. Trips. Book online at Fisherman'sLanding.com. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 58 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision-built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built by fishermen for fishermen. From our next-generation waterproof shorts like Tactical or Stealth to our new anhydrous waterproof jacket and bibs, the entire AFCO clothing line is purpose-built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and features designed to deliver for the demanding angler. To find AFCO products, go to AFCO.com and find a dealer near you. We all need to get around, but we all need something different from our vehicles. Your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered if you're looking for a new truck this month. Plus, it's SUV season, so they have great deals for everyone. Whether it's a new Echo Sport that is nimble and fun around town, or the Ford Explorer that is capable of putting a boat in the water and has seating for seven, Ford has you covered. 
Ford trucks and SUVs aren't just powerful and legendary. They have the latest technology that helps you seamlessly connect your smartphone and ensure you're safe on the road. Features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on trucks are truly a game changer at the ramp, helping you back up a trailer by simply turning a knob on the dash and doing the hard work for you. So check out all the great deals during SUV season and save some money on the right gear for you. Learn more at buyfordnow.com or visit your San Diego County Ford dealers today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Did you know you can listen to 97.3 The Fan from the comfort of your bed? Just say, Alexa, play 97.3 The Fan. Play 97.3 The Fan on radio.com. Do they have enough to really stay in this There's race? Alexa to listen to 97.3 The Fan. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And, man, we're having such a fun time and such an awesome time of the year. Everything happening. And, man, it just, it's, uh, what, what can I say? It's electric. It, it, it is electric. It's been a very busy morning. And check it out, Corey. In in almost two hours, you know, an hour and a half, we have, you know, the phone lines were full before the show even started. And in the very first time in two hours, we had somebody drop off during the break. So if you want a shot to get through right now, this is the time to call. And that's 833-288-0973. We're giving away the pair of Olakai sandals, the Ohanas. Really, really cool prize. Really great time. Really good talking to Doug. And let's just get right back into it. The phone lines are packed up. Let's do it. Let's talk to Mark. Mark's calling from Santee this morning. Welcome. Let's talk hook up, Mark. Hi, Mark. What's going on, Mark? Hey, good morning. Um, I got a question. I, well, my question was already answered about the cold snipers and the, the hooks on them. Cool. But why doesn't someone go to the manufacturer and tell them to upgrade their hooks and their rings? Well, you have to imagine a company like Shimano deals worldwide for multiple different fisheries and regions. And most of the fish being caught are probably, you know, 5 to 20 pounds um, and, you know, salmon and rockfish and, you know, maybe Steve whatever. Steve Basil talking about calico bass. School, yeah. yeah, calicos, school size tuna elsewhere. And we just happen to be lucky in Southern California in the last five years to have anywhere from 20 to 300 pound tuna. And this year the average tuna is that 50 to 100 pound tuna. Well, it just so happens that Colt Sniper is one of the most effective lures. It has great action. But the hardware that comes on it just isn't meant for that. And it's, it's made for a 15 to 30 pound it, fish. Like it you is, mentioned. and it's just not something that they're going to do a wholesale change and make people worldwide pay that much more for the same lure when they don't need it. They would have the same question: Why don't they? Why doesn't the manufacturer just make it? You know, with lesser hardware, and then, you know, we don't have to pay $25 for the lure. So, And, and bottom line, Doug, we're very fortunate to have all this bluefin right here in our backyard. Yeah, absolutely. And we're adapting a lure, like you've mentioned. We are. We're adapting a lure to fit the fishery. Yep. So, and, I mean, you know, hardware that's appropriate for catching a big fish, it's not cheap. You know, I mean, you're, no. it's cheap in the relative sense to what we're, you know, paying for our trips and things like that. But you're adding you're adding a $2 hook. You're adding a $1.50 to $2 split ring sometimes. I mean, you know, you're – for us to go catch a big bluefin, throwing $4 at a lure is nothing. No big deal, of course. But, you know, you think of a retail sense, that's – that's that's a third of the cost of the jig, you yep. know, that, that they would have to charge every single one that in most cases just aren't necessary. Yeah, so I don't know what the percentage of Colt Snipers sold worldwide is in Southern California, but it, it just wouldn't be feasible for them to jack the price up and put overkill for the rest of the world. But anyway, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing that we have them, and it's a beautiful thing that we figured out how to modify them to catch these nice fish. Great call, Mark. Appreciate it very much. All right, let's jump back into it. Our good friend from Montebello has talked to Doug. Good morning, Doug, and welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Hi, Doug. you got a good name there, Doug. Hey, <laughs> I, I got to tell you, you've got the best name going. I mean, in the fleet. Let, let's, just, let's just get it right out there. You've got a great name there, buddy. What's your question? I got two questions. Has anybody been experimenting, experimenting throwing a school of mackerel out there with them in their bait tank? And two, what kind of poles are you recommending right now for the bluefin? Like the graphite or the fiberglass or e-glass or whatever? Yep. Well, as far as the mackerel goes for targeting bluefin, that's been one of our best baits for decades for most fish. And uh, I know a lot of the the private yachts, for some reason, it seems to be their game. They slow troll way back with those uh, greenback mackerel and have had pretty darn good success on the big bluefin over the last five years. Um, 
there's nothing that says you couldn't throw a mackerel into any bluefin bite, but if you imagine on a private boat, you have limited bait capacity, and, I mean, do you want to put 60 mackerel in there and really not have any chum, or do you want to put, you know, 500 sardines in there, have some chum and some hook bait? Um, and a lot of this is jig fishing, so, you know, you can use the sardines for the chum and then, um, you know, throw your jigs. So, yes, mackerel is a good call, but it would probably be better on a boat with larger bait capacity. As far as the rods for the bluefin, it literally right now goes everywhere from probably 40-pound test up to 100. Um, if I was going to pick a material that your rod is made of, uh, graphite composite is probably the best. Um, that uh, Calstar Graphiter is 30% fiberglass, 70% graphite. When you're fighting a fish and the bluefin shakes their head, if there's any relaxation in that rod tip, it recoils quicker than the fiberglass. Um, so I'm going to say for most applications, some type of a graphite composite. Where fiberglass really comes in is for, you know, like if you're casting a, a mackerel, to get back to that bait, uh, to a marlin, let's say, and you've got one shot during the day, sometimes the graphite will recoil so quickly that it'll flick your bait off the hook, and those fiberglass rods load up and then, you know, shoot the bait out there more smoothly. So there are still really good applications for fiberglass. Uh, a surface iron jig stick, kind of the same thing. It loads up, and then it's a more gradual release, so it'll throw that jig out there, that lightweight jig out there. So... Um, there are applications, but really graphite composite is a great material for a lot of the fishing that we do. Well said, man. That's it, awesome. It really is. Yeah. That answer your question for you, Doug? Thank you, Doug. Good name. Hey, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy that name. You're, you're one of the blessed. <laughs> oh, let's so jump back next, in here. Yeah, let's talk to Vince. Vince calling from Pacific Beach. Welcome to Let's Talk Cook Up, Vince. Hey, Vince. Hey, guys. Uh, great show. Uh, love it. Love your stuff. Uh, you know, I don't know how much you guys, you know, Corey, I'm sure you keeping track of the freshwater scene but you know blockbuster news last week regarding mike long uh i'm oh, yeah. wondering fake records you know what are they going to do with them what should be done with them do we chuck them all what happens well i think what we think should be done and what will actually be done will maybe two different things but all of us can agree on one thing and it's what you just said uh, honestly, Vince. Yeah, I mean, I'm it's, with you. Yeah, the, Pete Rose, I mean, it's this is going to be the dilemma. Like Pete Rose, you know, do you take him out of the Hall of Fame? Yeah, it's just, you know? it's uh, honestly, Vince, I mean, uh, how, how do we even talk about it? It's such a black eye. You know, we'll, we'll never say his name again. And it's just, it, it's a black eye for the industry. It's a black eye for San Diego. It's a black eye. It's a double black eye for that individual. I'll tell you that. Boy, that's it's, for sure, it's man. It's a shame for all the people that did it right. Right. They or then have done it right. And yeah. The, they and continue. that were, you know, had to sacrifice a record or a tournament. Um, there's always that, you know, 2% out there that, you know, kind of has to wreck it for the rest of us. But we focus on the positive and move forward and, you know, know that uh, most of us do it right. It'd be cool to see some of those records you know, fall back to the people who did it legitimately over the years. I mean, just it'd be cool for their recognition, and I, and I hope that that happens. You know, selfishly, some of the lakes probably like the fact that their fish is an 18-pounder instead of a 15-pounder or whatever that scenario is. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But, you know, good job for the, uh, you know, exposing if that were, you know, if that's indeed was the case and, you know, that uh, everybody, you know, there'll at least be an asterisk next to it and everybody will know and, you know. Yep. Yeah, and, so. and, and truly at this point, we have to give – Kellen Ellis, a huge hat off for all the work he put in, and it wasn't for the dollar. It was to yeah. it was to show and prove us a point, Vince, that this was going on, and it was alleged for decades. But the expose this being exposed took a lot of time, effort, video work, and it took a lot to go in hand. Yep, no doubt about it. Appreciate the call very much, Vince. Thanks a lot for that. Who we got next, Corey? All right, let's jump back into it. Let's talk to Blake. Blake's calling from Temecula. Good morning. Welcome to the show, Blake. What's up, Blake? Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. What a great show. You got Boy, it, uh, from, from the... Oh, looks like we oh might have... shoot, yeah. I think we lost uh, Blake. Blake there, but no problem. Let's jump back in. Let's talk to Cliff. Cliff calling from Lakewood. Good morning, Cliff. What's up, Cliff? Good morning, guys. How you guys doing this morning? Great. Good. good. I, had a, I had a question about the Gold Label Cigar. Um, I've been using that 20-pound. I just love that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering about the 40-pound on the Bluefin, or should I go to maybe the Premier Cigar? But the Gold is just awesome stuff. 
Yep, we've definitely started to hear some positive comments. I am always leery to use something new without a track record on kind of a fish of a lifetime. I mean, let's face it, these 100-pound bluefin are coveted. They're hard to come by. And so we've been staying with the tried and true. With that said, 40-pound test has definitely been one of our go-to lines this year for those fish on the bait. Um, you you can't go any lighter than that or you lose them. You can't sometimes go heavier. You don't get the bite. And um, so we've been using the blue label, as mentioned earlier, because it has the great abrasion resistance uh, feature, um, and it gets bit well. It's invisible. The gold label is um, touting, you know, a little thinner diameter and even a greater abrasion resistance. And I'm starting to believe that that's true. We've had, you know, more and more comments coming in to the tackle store um, that that's the case. So it's still in my mind a kind of a newer item. And, um, you know, I'm not sure yet that I would fully pull the trigger on that unless maybe I had some fish under my belt. But if it was really good fishing and you wanted to start experimenting with it, I think it's probably going to be a good call. I, I really do believe that it's going to be the line of choice for that situation. You know, finesse fishing with 40-pound test. Yeah, that that's interesting. Goldie, well, I've always used a blue, but you're saying the gold is supposed to be thinner and more abrasion resistant? Yeah, and usually when you hear that, it, it doesn't pan out to be true, but they have a new formula that they're using and a new uh, technique for making this stuff, and they can't really go above that 40-pound test uh, efficiently. So it's the, you know, your lighter lines, 15 through 40, but it's a very nice line for sure, and um, I, I think that's got to be a personal choice. I'm I'm a little more conservative, and I tend to stick with what I know works. And that's that's me. That's why I'm asking. I mean, but the blue label. Over time, it will be proven. And so far, the comments have all been positive. Um, but there's just not a ton of comments. But it looks like it's going to pan out. I like it. I like it. You got to Hey, Cliff, very much. Thanks a lot for the phone call. Very much appreciate that. All right, let's uh, jump back into them. Let's, let's, we got a good friend on the line. Bart Hall is online. Good morning, Bart. Good morning, Bart. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to make a quick comment. Doug, it's such a treat to hear you on the radio. I always listen. And the three of you together are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we sure have a good time doing it, buddy. Well, we're yeah, all really, long-time it's, it's friends. But, but I want to let you know one thing. You got me so excited today that it's cost me a fortune. I booked a trip with Steve Bernard. I now, I've now decided to buy my 400 and 500 tranks. Nice. And I have to put yet more snipers and flat balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's an expensive morning, Bart. It's been very expensive. <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking forward. You've got me all jazzed. I'm ready to go. Thank you very much. When's, oh. your, when's your trip, Bart? Uh, he's looking at dates and let me know. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's yeah. great. I'm glad you're going to get out. It's, it's such a good year to go fishing. So uh, that, that's great. I'm glad you're going to get a chance to, to sample it. On the Liberty later in the year for oh, a, yeah. our Fred Hall trip, but but I want to go now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Bart. Well, we appreciate it very much. Have a great time on your trip. We'll look forward to we'll look forward to hearing how you and Pinar do on those yellow fins. Thank you very much. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate oh, that. Man, this show definitely gets me fired up too. And let's jump in. Let's talk to John. John's calling from Upland. Welcome to the show this morning, John. What's up, John? Yeah. Good morning, guys. How you guys doing? Good. We're, we're good. How about yourself? Good. Good. All right, uh, so I recently purchased a uh, Telica 20, and I want to pair it up with a rod. Now, the rod that I have, so I don't have to go out and spend any more money, is a, a CalSAR Graphite 165M, rated 40 to 110 pounds, and it's all roller guides. Would that rod work for that reel? Okay, tell me the model number again. I did not recognize that model number. Yeah, it's an older uh, rod. It's a 165M GF. Probably a 765 would be my guess. Yeah. And that's a, that was like an 80-pound trolling rod. It was used a lot earlier uh, on the yellowfin down on the long-range trips. Um, that was one of their original rods in the Graphiter series 30 years ago. And, um, yes, you could definitely put a Talica 20 on there. Um probably put 100-pound Spectra on there and then whatever leader, you know, 80-pound test for bait maybe, 200-pound um, test if you're going to do flat falling. But um, I think that's a good choice, actually. A lot of the guys are going a little longer and more of the traditional rail rods now uh, because of the way that when you lay it on the rail, 
Um, it keeps the tip a little bit further away from the boat, so when the tuna is doing its circles, you know, maybe the line doesn't have as much of a chance to rub on the bottom of the boat. But you're still talking a six and a half foot rod, and with plenty of guts for 80 pound test. Good call, John. Appreciate that very much. We don't got a lot of time, but we got him on the line. We got Pete Gray. Actually, Pete looks like the call just just dropped off of there, so oh. we uh, just just missed him. But hopefully, we'll hear back from him soon, and uh, you know, find out how that how that great trip's going. But um, actually, looks like we might uh, might have had him just pop back up there. There he is on the line. Pete, how about now? We got you. Hey, good there morning, Rick. Good morning, Doug. Good hey, morning, there we Corey. Are. How's the show going? We're going great. It's been a very busy morning, as you know, trying to call in. We've had a great time and talking all kinds of great fishing, but we're dying to hear how things are going in beautiful yeah. Kona with that Maui gym boat. Yeah, aloha from Kona, Hawaii. It's a big island for sure, and uh, another beautiful morning here, flat, calm, as it usually is on the lee side of the big island here. We've been fishing on the Maui gym boat with Captain Seth and uh, deckhand extraordinaire Kenny and uh, fishing with, of course, Maui Mikey, Mike Babstoni, and Paul Hebert, the crazy man himself from uh, Wicked Tuna. And we have uh, Brian from Maui Fish Prince and Kelly from uh, Maui Fun Charters on our team, as well as myself here. And, uh, uh, you know, as in typical Kona fashion, you know, it's kind of a lot of trolling and not a lot of action. But uh, we did have some action yesterday. We had one knockdown. Uh, on a blue marlin that didn't stick, and we did catch a 40-pound spearfish, which is a non-qualifier in the firecracker open here for uh, 42 boats in the tournament. So there was uh, there were two blue marlin boated yesterday, 400-pound okay. uh, minimum, 530-pound uh, blue, and a 488. Um, so that was kind of cool. Several releases. Uh, one boat had three releases. Uh, but a lot of boats blanked, like such as us, uh, in the 42. Today's another day. Uh, shotgun start at 7 a.m. this morning. Of course, it's three hours earlier here. We're just getting ready to get down to the boat. But a lot of fun. You know, uh, it's a beautiful place to fish. I have uh, two giant 14,000-foot peaks loom in the distance. And as you're fishing, like, maybe two miles offshore, it's uh, in in. 6,000 feet of water. It's 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 pretty sensational here in Conan. The fleet of boats is pretty amazing, too. You've got all these, you know, Merritt's and Buddy Davis's and all these top-of-the-line handmade East Coast boats over here that are uh, pretty impressive. A lot of Cabos and a lot of a lot of nice, like that 35 to, to, to 50-foot sport fishing uh, boats over here that are uh, very, very, very competitive. Some of the top guys in the and the biz over here in Kona are in this tournament. So we're looking forward to a big day here and hopefully land that 700-plus pounder today to take the tournament. Right on, buddy. Well, good luck to all of you guys. You know, we caught you just at the end of the show here, so we got to jump to it. But we really appreciate you letting us know what goes on. Sounds like a fun start to day one. And we will look forward next week when we're live at Mossy Ford Pacific Beach to get the wrap-up and hear about you and Paul from uh, Team Wicked Pissa catching that, uh, that grander and taking the tournament. Yeah, well, hopefully it's Paul reeling it in and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, have a great trip, buddy. Thanks for the update. Glad you guys are having fun back there. Our best to everybody on the Maui Gym team, and we'll talk to you next week uh, live at Mossy Ford. Thanks for covering, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks, oh, buddy. Man, Appreciate we can that. definitely hear the Kona Aloha in his voice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hook Up on 97.3 The Fan. Two years ago, Gamakatsu set out to develop a hook light enough for live bait to swim naturally, yet strong enough to handle your next trophy bluefin. The answer? The Gamakatsu Nautilus Heavy Duty. Most captains agree the Gamakatsu Nautilus hook is best for tuna. And now with the introduction of the Nautilus HD, no matter how big the tuna, Gamakatsu has a hook to handle it. The new Nautilus HD is now available with solid ring or standard hook. Get it now at select tackle shops and start getting bit. It's the Yamaha Outboard Spring Saving Sales Event. For a limited time, eligible select new 2.5 to 75 horsepower four-strokes come with up to $500 in dealer credit toward the purchase of additional goods or services. And 90 to 300 horsepower four-strokes include five years of warranty protection. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Today, visit your local Yamaha dealer. Offer ends June 30, 2019. Subject to change. Other restrictions and conditions apply. Select models excluded. 24-month Yamaha extended service added up to 36-month factory limited warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha Outboard dealers for details. Cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. For local and long-range fishing, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among seasoned or novice anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. They also do incredible Guadalupe white shark diving trips as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips. 
you need to check out the Islander on their website, islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to two- to five-day fishing. Watch the website for trips and adventures available. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. I love the ocean. I also respect the ocean. So when I'm paddling, I always wear my life jacket because things can change fast. You should do the same, and so should the people that you're with. Save the ones you love. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on 97.3 The Fan. It's been a busier than heck day and a lot. We called it electric, Rick. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It was a really fun day. Hey, Marty and Camarillo is the winner of the Olakai Ola Sandals, the Ohanas. Congratulations, Marty. You are going to love those shoes. Doug, can't begin to thank you enough time for coming in and hanging and talking tackle with us. It always goes by so fast and is so much fun, and that fun continues every day at the tackle store. And if somebody wants to come in and get the Doug Kern treatments and all the great gear and more info and going fishing on Liberty and all the great stuff. How do we do that? Yep. Well, I mean, obviously the best way is just to come down to Fisherman's Landing, hang out, you know, maybe go down the dock and get yourself a Point Loma Seafood Sandwich or something. Uh, you can always call us at 619-221-8506. Check us on the web, saltwatertackle.com. And for heaven's sakes, make some plans to go fishing. <laughs> this is going to, you know, these are the good old days, and um, we've got some of the best fishing we've had really in years. Every size blue fin, yellow fin, Dorado showing up, and uh, let, we'll see you down at the landing. You got it, buddy. Couldn't agree more, and I'm going to say it. I think we've got the very best crew in the whole business, and we look forward to getting to help everybody with their tackle and their big bluefin when they come down for the next trip. And Hey, speaking of the next trip, we're looking forward to having you next Saturday. We're live from Mossy Ford and Pacific Beach with Ron Lane from Fast Lane Kayaks, and the next Sunday, Captain John Connor from the Islander is going to be joining us. Another couple of great shows with some fantastic information. A huge thanks. Glad to have Adam back behind the phones and a big thanks to Doug and Dallas and Corey and especially Brian for keeping us all in the air. Great show. We'll look forward to talking to you next weekend and we'll look forward to seeing you live at Mossy Ford. Come join us for a great show. It's right off the I-5 in Pacific Beach. going to be a great time. We will see you then.